man accused of assaulting child roams free in the region. Trinidad establishes sex offender registry. And internationally, housing crisis in Ireland affects thousands. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Channel 2 Headline News Update. I am George Gonzalves. Thank you for joining us. Ranks of the Reliance Police Station in Burbies have reported that they have taken one more illegal gun off the streets. On Tuesday, a 32 caliber revolver was uncovered during a stop and search exercise on the Reliance Public Road in East Kanji, Burbies. The owner of the weapon was taken into police custody and is assisting with investigation. Almost four months ago, Pamela Charles Clark's grandson was allegedly assaulted by an adult in their neighborhood. However, despite knowing the man and alerting police of when he is home, the officers have yet to apprehend the man. Esther Sobers tells us more in this report. Many po people say that all the police, them at the back there, they ain't coming because um, you got to pay them a bribe. One local grandmother is frustrated with the police supposed inability to arrest a man that assaulted her 11-year-old grandson four months ago. Pamela Charles Clark of Sophia Greater Georgia complained in a previous interview about the police at the Cherokee Police Station. According to her, they were reluctant to visit her residence and arrest the suspect, who lives a few houses away. Shortly after this interview, Headline News had contacted the station sergeant at Turkine Police Station. They promised to investigate the matter, but to date, nothing has been done. They was cleaning this ball field here, and he went in the, the group, uh, chopping down the um, bushes and so, mm. after the ball field. And many times we called the police, the police, the police wasn't coming. Because I said, when you see the boy, call them. And when you see the boy and you call, you call them, they never ever show up. Then when they do things, they're either coming from the back street there, the last street here, they're coming from there, and they drive on the ground away. The aggrieved woman made several visits to the Turkine police station as the officers promised to arrest the suspect when he's home. But according to the woman, the police came only once. This was even after the woman would indicate when the suspect was at home. The mother went when they investigate the story. The mother, the mother went to um, the station and gave them a report. And since then, they never come. We call, I go at the police station about two or three times. And the, when they think they say go home, they can come and they never ever come. And how often do you see the suspect roaming the streets? The boy walk here every day. On the 30th of November, Clark's grandson was playing outside when the suspect accused the boy of throwing stones at him. In a rage, the suspect allegedly beat the boy with a bat, giving him severe injuries to the head, hands and other parts of his body. The child was later hospitalized for several days. To date, the child has been discharged from the hospital and attends school. His grandmother further noted that his academic performance has declined as he prepares to write the National Grade 6 assessment. To me, like him performed as like before. Mm -hmm. In people performing as like before. And during December month when I had the exam, I had plenty days he missed out and um he come down he come with low percentage. Mm -hmm. Headline News tried contacting the station sergeant at Turkine Police Station once again, but we were informed that he was in a meeting. Nonetheless, Headline News will continue to update this story as detail arise. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. On Thursday, 35-year-old farmer Peter Wan of Shulinab Village, South Rupununi, faced the high court charge with murder. He admitted that on February 18, 2017, at Central Rupununi, he unlawfully killed his wife, Justina Bernard. According to prosecution, the couple was drinking alcohol at a shop and later left for home on his bicycle, during which they got into an argument and Juan struck her several times in the head. He then rode away from the scene, but when he realized that he did not have his house keys, he returned to the scene of the crime, finding his wife lying motionless on the road. A post-mortem examination revealed that Bernard died from blunt force trauma to the head. 
Juan was charged with murder, however he pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter, and he was charged and sentenced to 14 years in prison, minus time on remand. Don't go away, coming up after the break we have your regional and international news. First time I voted, I was just 20, just out of UG and about to start working. In 2015, I voted for a decent new president who brought real change. I voted for progress. Me and Uncle Jerry talking about voting for the first time. He is now 55 and never voted before. You see he voting on March 2nd because he now see you not voting before they make sense. Anyhow, I got classes, don't want me to go. Make sure you're putting the eggs in the box by the farm and pee. That was a paid political ad. The voting process. Once you have been identified as the elector you claim to be, you would be given a ballot paper that is stamped at the back, top and bottom halves in your presence. On the ballot paper, provision is made for you to vote twice. Once at the top section where you vote for the party of your choice in the general election, and once at the bottom section where you vote for the party of your choice in the regional election. Make your mark in the box provided on the right of your choice. After you have voted, fold the ballot paper as shown by the election official. Dip the first joint of your right index finger in the ink provided and place the ballot paper in the ballot box that is there for this purpose. You would then have to peacefully depart the polling station. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-02779, 223-9653, email pro at gcom.org.gy or visit GCOM's website at www.gcom.org.gy. I remember the place. The shack was dirty. Cockroaches was everywhere. Then we was in one room. When people in charge, they give me a piece of land and we build a house upon it. And it's safe. And it's very comfortable. And here I watch my children develop and grow. I need action man. Strong leadership that give out land and have love. Build homes and create jobs. And bring down the cost to live in that children can grow. PPP deliver for my family. That's why I put in my ex next to the cup. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you had a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Change means opportunities. Change means progress. Change means economic development for all Guyanese. Change means a better life for my kids. Change is unity. Change means better education. Change means improved health care. Change means saying what you mean. Change means a better future. Change means better life. You gotta carry them some greens, you know. Here I tell you, we got some nice, lovely greens here for your soldier man. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Turn it around here. Hands. Hands. Oh, neighbor. Neighbor, you gotta be careful with the ID card, bye. Because I'm sure election day come, you go and vote. Bye, bye. Do you know that you can vote even though you know your ID card? Like, for instance, if you misplace it. Hey, what's something as you're talking? How are you going to vote without your ID card? When you go to the polling place, you go to the election officials and you tell them why you ain't got your ID card or why you misplace it or why you can't find it and then they're going to check the voters list. I want your name on the voters list. You're free to vote. What? It's a good thing you tell me because I didn't know though. But anyway, me taking no chances. That's why I keep it. me ID card. Close. Ashanta, I will take good care of mine. Because come February, I will be exercising my right to vote. February? Never like you, Mado. Election is in March, 2nd of March 2020 to be exact. It's March? But I really thought it was February. But you thought it's wrong. Yeah, by March 2nd. Whole day. From 6 in the morning to 6 in the night. Well, look at that. Who would have thought that you two would have been the ones correcting me? LOL. <laughs> LOL, LOL. Yeah, 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 yeah. And who would have thought the day would come when they give an ugly man like you ID card and so? <laughs> hey, good one, my Yeah, 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 yeah. When big boss get your fresh beans and so. Yeah, have a good day, boss. Hey, yeah, boss, yeah, boss. All right, just come back. Just come funny. back, right? Not very funny. <laughs> First time I voted, I was just 20, just out of UG and about to start working. In 2015, I voted for a decent new president who brought real change. I voted for progress. Me and Uncle Jerry talking about voting for the first time. He is now 55 and never voted before. You see he voting on March 2nd. Because you now see you not voting before they make sense. Anyhow, I got classes, don't want me to do Make sure you're putting the eggs in the box by the farm and keep. That was a paid political ad. Welcome back. BB Backus brings us your regional and international headlines. Greetings to you, our viewers. Now we take a look at news in the region and around the world. In the region, the Trinidad and Tobago government yesterday said that perpetrators of sexual crimes would face the full brunt of the law, aimed at deterring, punishing, and shaming rapists, pedophiles, and those others with a tendency to commit sexual crimes. In a statement, the Office of the Attorney General said that the laws went to ef into effect as of January 31st this year. Between the years 2000 to 2019, there were a total of 1,693 persons convicted of sexual offenses in Trinidad and Tobago, yet zero of those persons were registered in a sexual offenders registry. Under Trinidad and Tobago's Sexual Offenses Amendment Act 2019, for the first time in the history of the country, information on sexual offenders can be shown on an online website for the public to access their names, their addresses, photographs, and offenses committed. And internationally, the Trump impeachment trial comes to a predictable end as Senate Republicans vote to acquit the president. Here's more. Here in small town America, you didn't need a psychic to predict how Democrats would react to the failed attempt to impeach the president. I believe the impeachment was called for, um, and it's unfortunate that the witnesses were not allowed to testify. But this is the city of New Hope in the swing state of Pennsylvania. The Republicans say that, that you know, uh, impeaching Trump would further divide the country, but letting him do, get away with what he's gotten away with divides the country also. And this sleepy town where the first president of the United States, George Washington, camped with his army during the American Revolution, is tired of politics. I said, I'm not a Republican. I didn't vote for Trump, but I'm just sick of here and just trying to get him out. Yeah. You know, tell me something that you're going to do for the country. And even those who don't like the president aren't exactly pleased with the Democrats. I have yet to see, I think, true leadership come and say, okay, well, here's, a, here's an option that you can grab onto. 
A lot of the people we spoke to here in New Hope say they just don't know who to believe when it comes to politicians. But with wages rising and unemployment falling, the strong economy could favor Donald Trump, who won Pennsylvania in 2016 by less than a percentage point. Because I don't think the charges that they put together were worthy of uh, impeaching a president. Yeah. Go ahead. Would you vote for him? Yes, I would. Yeah. And I voted for Clinton the last time. But some people who voted for Trump the first time around say he needs to clean up his act. If he keeps doing what he's doing right now as far as the economy and, and trying to help our country, I'll vote for him again. But he needs to really stop some of the silliness that he does and concentrate on his job. With so much drama in D.C., there seems little hope here of bringing the two sides together anytime soon. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, New Hope, Pennsylvania. And finally, Ireland is one of the fastest growing economies in Europe. But the sudden boom after years of economic austerity has left the country with a critical shortage of affordable housing. Al Jazeera's New View Barker reports. Lifting the lid on Ireland's housing crisis. It left this family homeless, forced to live with friends and relatives or in precarious short-term housing, the result of sky-high rents and a market geared against them. The main challenge was people not wanting a single mother with three children because maybe single mothers are trouble or why are they single? You know, I, I did, I, I walked the streets a lot and I often had just days where I, I just felt despair. Charities have intervened where the government hasn't. The family now has a long-term home and a place to grow. This charity is inundated with desperate calls, some from entire families evicted from their homes. You have children with you, do you? A record number of babies are now being born into homelessness. Currently we have nearly 4,000 children who are homeless. That includes nearly 2,000 families. It's a disgrace that there are so many children homeless, but it's just a reality of the homelessness crisis in Ireland at the moment. Ireland was hit hard by the economic crash in 2008 and house building stalled. Since then wages have increased, but rents and house prices have risen by a bigger margin. It's left an entire generation struggling to afford rents that are higher in Dublin than Tokyo, Sydney and Singapore. Meanwhile, house prices have soared and social housing is scarce. On the outskirts of Dublin, a new suburbs emerging from wasteland, built by an American property giant to attract large investors. This is a three-bed penthouse. In a nearby development, this three-bedroom apartment costs more than $3,000 a month, well beyond the reach of many. We need something in the order of 35,000 houses a year. We're only delivering 20, 25. So the main political parties at the moment are promising 40 and 60 and 80 and 100,000 uh, units every, uh, over the course of the next government. Whereas I think they um, perhaps might need to look and see how feasible those numbers are. It is a critical issue in this year's election. All parties agree that rents need to be lower and there need to be more houses, but they can't agree on how much to intervene in the lucrative private market. The government of Prime Minister Leo Varadkar is having to account for its time in office. Opinion polls are predicting a shift away from the main centrist parties, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, who've wielded power for generations towards left-wing Sinn Féin. During the conflict in Northern Ireland, the party was regarded as the political wing of the Republican paramilitary group, the IRA. It's put housing at the heart of its campaign. Charities are urging all politicians to find a robust solution to the housing crisis. The consequences of inaction are clear. More families denied the basic right of a secure place to live. Eve Barker, Al Jazeera, Dublin. And that is all for today's regional and international news. Here's the 3D with forecast.
Thanks, BB. That's all for this edition of Headline News Update. Tune in Friday at 6 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube, or visit our website at headlinenewsguyana.com for more news. Until then, take care.